Hey board gamers and welcome back to another unfiltered gamer review for the game The Scare Factory by Sapar Games. It plays one to four players and it's cooperative. In this game you're going to be playing as one of the many terrors inside of The Scare Factory and you are attempting to scare the resident ghost hunters and uh, necromancers, people that are trying to come in and mess with you and you want to scare them and uh, you're going to be utilizing all the scare tactics you have in your facility. However beware though there's a boss that's going to come out at a certain point in the game after a certain number of rounds and you'll have to deal with him. If you can get to your vault, you're in trouble. But if you can manage to scare enough people, by the time he comes out or before he comes out, you can win the game. Will you and your fellow workers, co-workers, be able to scare the living daylights out of the people that are attempting to come in and mess with your facility in time? Or will they manage to A, defeat you, or B, get into the room in which you do not want them to get into? Let's take a look at the game. I'll show you how it's played and how to win, and then we'll come up and I'll discuss my review and my outro. Welcome to the Scare Factory. Let's go ahead and talk about all the components in the game. First, you have tiles, the Scare Factory tiles, and these are the starting tiles, and these ones over here, which are the main opening area tiles, which have the different doors on them. You're also going to get a set of cards. This is the setup cards here, and these are the spawning cards over here. Each player and each boss will have their own unique set of cards here, which is going to form a, a deck. And you're also going to get miniatures for every character in the game, the minions, the bosses, and of course, your characters themselves. There's also a die, which is going to be your scare die and your action die, and a bunch of die that are associated with the different minions in the game. Uh, you're also going to get player boards. These player boards are going to be for the boss and for your own player. And finally, you're going to get some tokens over here, and you're also going to get a boss arrival tracker, which looks kind of like an elevator meter, showing the boss slowly trying to arrive into the scare factory. To begin the step of the game, it's rather simple. You're going to choose the number of players you'd like, give each player their player deck, uh, their player board, and their miniatures, as well as their starting tiles. You're then going to flip over two cards from this spawn deck here. After you've taken the two cards uh, for a two-player game, or three for three, or four for a four-player game, you're going to then combine them. And each of these are going to represent something. For instance, these tiles here represent the number of tiles, or these cards here represent the number of tiles in the game, six plus six, which is 12. So after you place the main tile of the game, which doesn't count towards it, you'll then place 12 12 tiles out. And then you're going to go ahead and place your two tiles for your characters in any area you'd like. And finally, you'll place out the spawning pits for the types of minions. There's two types of minions. You're going to have the mystical ones and the martial ones, which are basically like the melee combat ones. And I have them separated on each side. Uh, then you're also going to go ahead and determine how many units start in the game. And in this case, it's going to be three of these martial ones, uh, in which case I'll just put three of these guys here in this area. That's where they go. And then one spiritual. So I'll take one of the spiritual units and place it in its starting zone. And then finally, this is the boss cards here. There's the little crowns here, which is going to show you 10 plus 10, which is 20. So you'll take the boss deck, shuffle it up, and then deal out that number of cards equally in each of the five different areas here. They are little scare areas that are associated with these tokens over here. After you've done that, remove the rest of the cards. You won't utilize them. Uh, remove all the extra players as well as the extra player decks. You won't be utilizing those either. Make sure that the boss is set to arrive. He can be set to arrive in any of these locations here. Uh, remember the boss is trying to get um, opened up. So once once it gets from 3, 2 to 1 to here, then he's going to spawn on his specific bo boss starting space as well, which you'll be placing in the setup. And that's going to basically uh, provoke the second wave of the game. So choosing 3 here here is the normal. Now, if you want to play easier mode here, and if you want to play super hard mode, you can place it right there. But I'll go ahead and set it right here. And then that's pretty much it. That's the setup for the game. Make sure you have this deck shuffled. This is where you're going to be spawning units. It'll tell you the unit and the type and the number of units you're going to spawn. And then, of course, have your action die ready, as well as any die that are associated for the characters that are going to be in play. Now, the last little thing 15 tokens of each type. There's the scare type, which are red, and then there are these types here. These are like the uh, they're like the, the portal ones here, which basically protect the doors. And the setup for the game is complete. To begin play, it's rather simple. The enemies will go first, and how the enemies move is fairly simple. They're going to each get their own die based on the type. So this case here, this might be like the uh, necromancer here. He'll get his die. And then these guys over here um, are going to get their die as well. And you'll roll the die for each of the different types. Uh, blue. This character will go through the door that is blue, okay? And um, if there is no door that is accessible with that color, they will just stay there. Uh, there's 
a bunch of different types of colors, and they're all associated to doors. There's also a wild one allowing you to choose, and there's an investigate one, which got this little eyeball here, and that's basically going to move to the closest player and also investigate. And investigate's really useful. I'll explain how that works later. We'll just say that this door is blue, and we'll go through it. Uh, these guys have red, and this door over here is red, so these guys will move through that as well. After that, they are basically done because there's nothing else that could have happened. Uh, there are certain things that can happen, like they can walk onto tiles with these scare tokens, they can walk through these ward tokens, um, or they can walk into a space with more than four units, in which case they will continue to move and investigate, similar to like games like Pandemic, so they'll kind of like splash out. Um, then the players will begin. You'll choose a player to start their turn, and on a player's turn it's rather simple. They're going to move their max movement, and the movement is associated with the right-hand side of your player board. Then they're going to do their turn rules, and each of the characters actually function differently. Like this player here says you'll place a ward token out, and one of any other token. You can use up to one of the cards that you have here, which is also your life total. And then you can have a special ability that you can use, which is place one adjacent tile to a tile that you're on. The last thing you can do, which is not addressed on here, is you can move through a locked door. A locked door is a doorway that is available to have a tile placed to the next side of it. So in this case here, if you end your turn over, if you had ended your turn over here, or maybe you started over here, at the end of your turn you can take a tile from the locked tile stack over here and place it just like that, and that would end your turn. So there's still ways of discovering more things. And that would be it. After you do that, it would move to the next player. They would follow their turn rules, and then the enemies would get a chance to go. Uh, so, for instance, I'll just have this character move, and she's going to move five movement, one, two, and three. Uh, when you get to this middle area here, you're able to gather one type of each token. So you can gather a scare token and a ward token and place it on your board. There's no limit to the amount of guys you can get here um, on your board, but there is as far as this area here goes. You're going to gather one of each. And then I can go ahead and go maybe one and maybe two. And I can place that ward there, and maybe I can place that scared token right there. And after that, I can go ahead and... Uh, oh, I can only place one of each token. Only one token, so I guess, I guess I'll just place that there. Uh, then I can go ahead and play, play up to three cards. I can check these and play them. It's like, for instance, there's a consumable here that lets me get three scared tokens, or one that lets me gather five ward. However, remember that these are your health, and when you lose these, if they're consumable or if you just take damage, then you can be killed, and you'll be removed from the game up until the point where you can come back into play by hopefully rolling into play. Um, the last thing is your special ability. You can also go ahead and draw a card for any player. So how that works is you can say, oh, this player gets to draw a card, and bam, they'll get more health. Or maybe she chose to use this, gathering three scare tokens from this pool over here. In which case, at the end of her turn, maybe she'll want to take a card from her own deck and replenish her HP. It's a good way of keeping yourself in play. She's basically like a healer, but also most of her cards are consumables. Then the next player getting a chance to go. One, two, I'll gather these guys here three. I can go ahead and place a ward and a scare token. Four. And maybe I want to stop there. I can then use up to one of my cards here. So maybe I'll go ahead and rotate this. That's one of his abilities. He can rotate a tile next to him. And then I can go ahead and place one tile adjacent to the tile that you're on. So maybe I'll go ahead and place this guy over here. He'll be over here. Uh, and then that would be it. Then it would be the bad guy's turn once again. The bad guys would get a chance to go. They'd roll their dice associated with the different characters. Well, where are you guys? We'll just say it's these guys here. And then they're going to get a chance to move. This will go red, which there is no way. These guys will go blue. There's no way there. In which case, you'd move on to the next part of the bad guy's turn, which is the boss tracker. The boss will go down one space. And if this boss ever goes to here, that'll end the uh, first round of the game, or the first phase. Now, then you're going to go ahead and draw spawn cards. You'll draw one for each player. Associated spawns will go in the associated locations, whether it's martial or spiritual, and then the number will be associated as well. So three necromancers in the spiritual area, one detective in the martial area. Take them from the pool. I'll just say it's these guys here. And uh, we'll take one of the marshals and put them over here. The final thing is you can uh, draw player cards. You're going to draw them based on the guys you scare. Because throughout the game, basically, you're trying to scare these guys. And when you scare them, you'll remove cards from the bad guy's pool. So in this case, I didn't scare anybody, so we go to the next round of play. Um, but let's go ahead and say that these guys did walk into here. If they walk into here, they'll get scared. This is going to trigger. Uh, these guys are going to then roll a die, and based on where they move, in this case it's wild, maybe I'd move them over here, this would go away, and they would get scared once. In which case, this guy would lose one of these cards associated with that. And at the end of the round, if these are all gone, that's how you win the game. However, after you take a number of turns and this guy gets unlocked and he gets placed into his starting area, 
these will all open up. They'll all trigger. Some of them are going to be passives and some of them are going to be actives that in activate instantly once. And that's why you kind of want to get rid of these guys here. Uh, when the boss is triggered, the rounds still progress the same way, except for the boss has his own turns. He functions very similarly to these guys here as they move around the board. He has his own die as well, which allows him to move around. And his main goal is to get to here. If he can get here, he'll win the game. But remember, he still gets scared. He'll get scared just like any of these other guys do. And of course, he's still able to win by removing the HP from all the characters here. Whenever a bad guy were to walk into a space of another character, they're basically going to roll this. Uh, there's an attack die in this one here. And they could either crit, they can either uh, hit, or they can miss. Miss is the X there. And based on that, it'll be either 0, 1, or 2 damage, which can remove a player from uh, play up, in, up for an entire round, or maybe even more than that. And uh, so that's how you can lose one way. And of course, the other way is this guy getting over here. But the rounds basically go like that. You're going to move the bad guys. You're going to spawn the bad guys and drop this thing down. Check to see if you get any additional cards for scaring the bad guys away. Then you're going to check to see if you're dead because of the damage. Then the uh, players are going to get a chance to go, taking their turns each, and rinse and repeat and up, up until one of the victory conditions is met. Each character has their own unique abilities, each character has their own turn rules, and the board setup is always different for each and every game. You can place as many tokens uh, down in each of the areas that you'd like, but remember, for every time they get scared, they're going to have to roll the die and move around the board. So you'll be utilizing the scare tactic die. So something that's really useful could be like this. These guys go from over here, on their turn, they walk into here. That triggers a scare. That triggers a scare because they roll blue. And they roll blue again, so that triggers another scare. In which case, all three of these have been triggered. Thusly, the skull, the slime, and this little chain area, you would take one of each of these guys, and that would remove HP from the boss, which is the only way to win the game, trying to remove all this thing there. And that's basically it. There's a ton of stuff going on in this game, but it's rather simple as far as how the turns go and how everything works, and you're utilizing all your abilities to your best potential in order for yourself to scare the boss, and of course, all the people who enter your little cavern here, your little cave scaring factory. <laughs> Scare Factory is a game in which you're going to cooperate with your fellow co-workers in order to stop intruders from entering the factory and messing with your wonderful uh, menagerie of different things. Now, however, you're going to have to be using a certain puzzle placement uh, uh, mechanics in the game. You're going to be placing down tokens in areas, hoping to scare the people intruding into one location into another that's going to trigger a scare chain. Uh, that is going to allow you to remove cards from the boss, which in turn lets you defeat the boss. Uh, at a certain point, the boss is going to spawn based on the level of difficulty you choose in the game, and of course, uh, the sooner he comes out, the more challenging it's going to be, and for every round that you're not able to remove the uh, monsters from the board and scare them away in chains, or have them just get scared away by the roll of the die, it will effectively start crowding the board up. And there's a punch of different guys that are going to start spawning. And of course, you're working with your team. All the different characters function differently, um, and your objective is, of course, to be able to uh, do as much scaring as humanly possible and use the right scare token. So that's kind of the scare aspect of the game. And of course, the cooperative aspect is to make sure that you selectively choose different areas of the board to cooperatively work with other players. I'm going to take this area and these guys, and you'll take this area over here. We'll work together in this area to stop the boss from getting over here because we don't want him to hit that specific tile in the game because it'll trigger the end. We need to make sure that these specific scare uh, tokens are out on the field because those are what are left to deal with the boss. And of course, when the boss spawns, then there's the added challenge of the cards that are left alive on the left around on the boss. These cards get flipped over and revealed and you have to deal with them. Some of them are passive. Some of them instantly will be consumed and be more challenging for you to de have to deal with. And of course, uh, it all plays in, in role with each of the characters. And the uh, interesting thing with this game is that each character functions differently. Some of them will let you place out more tokens other than will let you move farther. Some of them will allow you to gain health or give other players health, which in turn are cards, which can be consumable or be used as passives, as well as, of course, keeping your characters on the board. You do not want to die in this game. No, you're not out. But when you are deceased, it'll take a miracle to get you back in um, <laughs> and keep you in the game because it kind of puts everybody at a huge disadvantage and the board starts swelling up. You need everybody's actions to make sure that this works out well. And uh, stacking cards is a nice way to introduce additional health aspects. And of course, when you stack cards, you use the, you lose or use the abilities underneath them. Otherwise, you're going to be out of them until you take damage. And taking damage is pretty simple. When somebody walks into your space, uh, they're going to mess with you and potentially make you lose some health. 
Uh, there's a ton of miniatures in this game. If you like games with miniatures, this is one that's going to have a large um, variety of them. There's, I believe, six different minions. You got four different characters and two different bosses. In the prototype that we have, there was one boss that we played with that has its own unique deck of cards uh, that will allow him to do certain things. And that's the same to say with every character. Each character you play as has a different deck and a different strategy. Whether you're playing as like the workshop dude who's able to like move around tiles, add new tiles, switch them around and all that kind of stuff. Or maybe as the plague doctor, or doctress I suppose, uh, where you're attempting to heal other players, utilize more cards, uh, use these cards to your advantage, but also not use too many of them to the point where you lose that like health that you would have wanted to probably keep when some bad guy pops up into your area and uh, there's like a mitigation factor and so every character functions just a little differently but they all have the same end goal in mind uh the tiles for the game are sturdy and nice the entire prototype is very nice i got a copy of the prototype right and it's got a lot of the resin figures and because of that there's some damage to them from the mail uh but when you get your copy they will not be of this type of quality for the uh for the printing so i wouldn't have to, i wouldn't worry about it if i were you this happens all the time it's not very uncommon for the post to throw packages 10 feet and crash them into other packages uh your board is nice and it displays where you're going to be placing your health tokens what your characters do how much movement they have a place to place your deck uh, one thing i could say is i wouldn't mind having a space in your board in order to be able to place your scare tokens and your um your other little portal tokens that kind of give you an idea of like a supply pool area um, but otherwise it's pretty straightforward as to how your board works and of course you have your uh boss arrival track which kind of looks like an elevator is always coming to to visit your scare factory and that thing starts ticking this countdown timer of, of danger and if he comes out too early and not enough cards have been removed due to not scaring enough of the uh, residents or the intruders that have visited you you're going to be in deep duty uh, but otherwise the high quality of the game the artwork is also really solid in this game as well if you like kind of like a dark steampunk uh, steampunk type of feel the game you're going to enjoy this one here it's not overly dark but it's also uh, not light and kid friendly either it's probably somewhere in the middle i probably wouldn't mind playing with my kids about ages like 10 to 13 provided i had kids but uh yeah it's it's got a little bit of a dark nature to them it's got some goo and it kind of reminds me of world of warcraft type darkness in in the style and theme of the game uh, this game has a lot of puzzle aspects too. Now you have to type, type, choose specific areas and it's very important that you do so and when you don't you are going to suffer because of it alpha gaming it could play a role in this game but it's not as likely because you have to utilize your character specifically to um, how it wants you to use it and and not everybody's going to know how that works you will have more of a knowledge over your character and what you're doing throughout the game than other people will but of course it's always still possible there's also some luck driven aspects to it the bad guys will get scared based on die rolls they'll move based on die rolls and you might take damage uh, based on die rolls so that is all factored in as well and so there's a lot of mitigating factors how you build the different areas up on the board is going to change how that works and uh, you have a lot of interesting aspects too when it comes to creating the game uh, one thing that's really unique about this game is the setup you set the game up kind of how you want and uh, you place certain things like the spawners and your characters how you want because being close to them or away from them it's kind of a mixed bag you kind of want to be close because you need to scare them but being too close will cost you and especially uh, when the boss pops out because that's when danger starts really really getting up there so you have to have this nice balance of placement when you're creating the the dungeon or the tile lying aspect of the game which is very nice it's kind of a little different than betrayal where it has certain setup areas and you kind of just discover them this one's kind of pre-set up with some discovering aspect but mainly you kind of like set the board up how you want which means you're always going to have a unique structure provided you want to but if you don't want to you can play the same scenario again and just uh, hope you do get better cards and better dice roll and make better decisions uh, this game is a lot of fun if you like games that involve the tile placement uh, as well as of course the tactical movement uh, a game that has an interesting puzzle element to a cooperative game uh, this is something i would definitely check out if you don't like games with a lot of dice rolling this might and this one might not be for you if you don't like cooperative games it's also probably one you might not like however if you do like solo games it does have a solo mode as well and if you like games with miniatures then definitely one i would suggest taking a look at as well we'll play this game on our live stream this wednesday so if you want even more information i'll put the link down below when we start up our live stream which will be probably about a day after the campaign starts to give you an even more idea of whether this be something for you the scare factory link down below in the description on kickstarter
Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game The Scare Factory, which is currently on Kickstarter. If you'd like, like I said, there's a link down below in the description. You can also go ahead and check out unfilteredgamer.com, blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more, as well as additional reviews for games that aren't even on our YouTube channel. Well, we're going to have different writers, they're going to cover different games. So if there's something you want to uh, read about that's maybe not on our YouTube channel, then that's a place where you can take a look at as well. You can also go ahead and check out our Discord. We do bunch of different things there as well as you can go ahead and check out our patreon you can support us for a buck a month it helps us get out more games do more giveaways for our live streams speaking of live streams every wednesday 6 30 p.m pst on facebook youtube and on twitch all right guys that's all i got for you this time and as always i look forward to making you subscribe next time <laughs>